Good evening. Welcome to Reflections on East Granby. My name is Mike Malloy and I'll be your host this evening. Today's date is May 19th, 2012. Our guest tonight is Thomas Henry of 33 Winding Hills Road in East Granby. He's a 65-year-old resident of East Granby, born in 1947. He moved here in 1982, lived here for 29 years, 30 years in December, and he lives here with his wife, Betty. Thank you for joining us tonight, Tom. Thank you. All right. Usually where we start out with everyone is where you were born. So. I was born in Kokomo, Indiana. Okay, in 1947. 47, yep. Just after World War II. The yep. original baby boom. Baby. Oh, yeah. That's what I always uh, argue with people that... Uh, that, uh, that that we were the ones. They, the classification starts in 1946, but right. But uh, you know, every our class was always the biggest class. The class before us was like 60, and the next class, our class, was 105. And that was the boom. That was the boom. Yeah, and it went on for about five or six years. Oh after yeah. That, right? I mean, just everything. You're just a glut. We've been a glut going through the society. So what? What time? Sorry, what town were you born in? Kokomo, Indiana. Kokomo, Indiana, and you lived there for how many years? Until I was 18. Okay, so what are your earliest memories of Kokomo? Well, it, it, it was a, it's a—it's a very—it's right in the middle of some of the best agricultural land, so it's a very strong agricultural community. What type of crops do they grow? Um, corn and beans, and they were hogs and mostly livestock. So a diverse kind of. Yeah, it's—it's yeah. it's gone more. It's moved greatly now from the smaller diversified farms that I grew up on to, to now they're huge green farms, more. So they're more factory farms? And more so, Yeah. more so. Okay, so what, what was Kokomo like? What was the town well, itself? Kokomo was about 25,000 uh, people and it was a very much uh, in the center of Indiana, in the center of this rural community, it was a very much industrial okay. community. Um, the only, and still the only, Chrysler transmission plant is there. Okay. And Delco was there, and Stellite Steel Mill, and a couple of others. It was so you had heavy industry there. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean it was very much. A lot of farmers worked there in the winter. Oh really? My so, dad, my dad worked there 35 years. He could never make enough on the farm to leave the leave the factory. Oh really? Yeah, that wasn't uncommon in the no, uh, in that era. No, uncommon at all. Yeah. yeah, that goes back all the way back into like the 20s and teens. Oh, People sure. used to have. Uh, jobs and run their farm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, okay. So what, what? You went to school there. You went. What were the schools like in in Kokomo? What do you remember of that? Well, I don't remember that there were much. We were in. We were not. We did not go to school in the city. We lived about ten miles out out of town. Okay. You could just barely see the next house from okay. where we were. You right. could see the. It was so flat. You can see the horizon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, but it was. A, we were in that in a. In a smaller school system because it was, um, it was really spread out. I mean, a, a large area. Right. Um, but there was a lot of change because of the of the boomers. So when the boom hit, because you were one of the first uh, the way the classes, they must have started building schools pretty quickly. Well, yeah. consolidating, right? Building, changing, uh, and uh, you know, kind of adjusting and expanding. So in elementary school, it was a fairly small school, but by the time you got to secondary school, was it bigger? Did you go with a bigger group? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the way they kind of funneled them down. They, we were, I guess there were, our school was was uh, one through eight, our elementary school. Right. It was a school, my, and it was old. It was a school my dad went to. Right. And, um, but there were several of those throughout the count the county that would consolidate into the high school okay so uh high school what was that like i mean was it that what were your memories of so the, now you would have went to school like in the early 60s right high school right. okay so that we was graduated a pretty, in 65 yeah. pretty energetic time for the country well it was a, it was just on. beginning really it yeah was, i mean there was it was still it was still pretty um we didn't lose our innocence till about '66. I don't think. Okay, so it's still still pretty almost yeah, like was, a carryover from the '50s. Oh sure, yeah, yeah. that's exactly the way I see it. Is when you look at the pictures in the of the yearbooks and things, it's, it it really was. It was changing, but we weren't really fully engaged in Vietnam yet. <laughs> Not a lot a lot of long hair yet. No, no, okay. the Beatles were were really just like they really came on the scene about '64. Yeah, uh, so they were just be, beginning to hit. 
that change was just beginning. The the, the really the the drug awareness and the and the hard rock and all that didn't had not started yet. Okay. Really didn't start until till sixties till later in the sixties. The mid to late sixties. Okay, so what so you graduate high school and where do you go from there? Well, I didn't do very well. Okay. <laughs> so I was working at a feed mill and at a farm. Okay. And um, <laughs> I always tell my children that that I make all the right decisions for the wrong. I make the right choices for the wrong reasons. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but um, I had a friend uh, who wanted to uh, always wanted to be a park service ranger. Okay. And I I never really wanted to be anything. Right. A, a farmer. You, you didn't know. have a anything I was, outside I was working of farming. To, yeah, farming, yeah. driving a truck, hauling grain, stuff like that. Right. And um, so we were very good friends. So we applied for a park service job together. Right. And they called me. Right. <laughs> Not him. Okay. That's <laughs> because it's they, ironic. Huh? They they wanted uh, they wanted somebody quickly, and they also wanted somebody bigger and stronger than him. Okay. And I turned them down. Really? I said... Um, well, that's a great job. Too. Well, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I only was going because John was going. I just know a lot of people have been trying to do that. Of course, uh, I don't know if it's different now than it was. Well, I don't think so. I don't... And, you know, a lot of us, especially for the summer, it was a summer job. Oh, okay. A lot right. of it for the summer it is a stepping stone. And yeah. it's also a... But it's also a political appointed kind of a job. Okay. But they wanted us in... They wanted me in Grand Canyon in two weeks. Really? Wow. And I said no. Yeah, that's a pretty big life change to throw it. Well, somebody. I was, I, I mean, Unless I wasn't even thinking about that. It wasn't right. my dream to go. Right, you know? right. So, <laughs> I guess it was, maybe it was two days later, they found a job for John, my oh, friend. No kid. And he spent the summer in the fire tower. Right. And I spent the summer in the north rim of the Grand Canyon fighting forest fires. Wow. That was really a wonderful, wonderful I, I uh, can imagine, yeah. adventure for this old country boy. <laughs> Yeah, what was that like? I mean, well, it was great. I mean, we were we were uh, you know the, the the north rim of the Grand Canyon is very isolated, right? So we were the law, right? As a, as the firefighters, we were kind of the hot the only shot. officials in the area, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Plus a couple of rangers, and you know, there's always tourists coming in and out, and but we really adventures to go tromping out through the canyon to fight forest fires. It was mostly. Small fires, maybe the size of this room, by lightning. Right. But, but you would you would um, snuff it out. Fight, yeah, yeah, fight them with a with an axe and a shovel. There's, <laughs> I mean, the dirt. There's no dirt. It's right. just duff, you know. And yeah. it's it's a big, it's a beautiful big open forest because it's ponderosa pines. Okay. And because it's such rock and not much soil right. there's not under there's not much undergrowth right if any you know many places so it's a sweeping kind of sweeping yeah, beautiful yeah. and yeah. and and most of the time we were on or near the edge of the canyon and a lot of times we went down i think we've got we figured that one time we were down a mile really and it's about two miles down Right. Now, does that go, is that a mile under sea level, or is that a mile under the elevation of the rock around it? It can't be under sea level. That oh, no, it's no. to sea level, because we're... Oh, so you're starting at yeah, quite we, an elevation. We were at, right. we, were, we were at our highest elevation was somewhere around 10,000 feet. Okay. So you cut in up 5,000 feet right into the rock to get a mile down. 5,200 well, feet. Well, we walked down. I mean, but no, no, I'm not saying you, 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 you do with your axe. But, or no. your, but that's the, 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 uh, the, what's the river there? The Snake River? Or what's it? Colorado. Colorado River. Cut through and cut oh, yeah. out that canyon. Oh, yeah. Mile oh, yeah. Down. oh wow. yeah. Just Amazing. magnificent. And we were, we were, we went places where people had never gone. We knew, we knew that. And right. It was just wonderful. Wonderful. Right. And we, but we would, we, we would follow an airplane would give us a, an azimuth, and then we would leave the truck and... So you'd use coordinates that they gave you, and then yeah. you'd find it? Yeah, and then we'd go find it. And that was to find the fires? Yeah. Really? And so then, we would, then we would fight them. That must have been quite an experience. Well, it was. Yeah. I mean, and, and most of the time, they were small fires. We would, we would get them pretty much under control, or a lot of times, we weren't really out of control. They were just smoldering, and right. they were waiting to be out of control, and we got them before that happened. Right, right. And um, 
Oh yeah, we would just stay out there until we got them done. And so how many people were in your crew? How many? Six, I think. So six of you would hike off, follow the coordinates? It wouldn't always be six. It would, some of the times it would only be two of us. Just to go out and depending snuff on them. what they thought that Depending on what they thought it was. And a lot of times if two would go out and then if it was bigger, two more would come. Okay. Um, a fascinating experience. You know, a couple of times there's, there's um, knolls out in the middle of the canyon and there was a fire and they would drop us off a helicopter. Really? Oh, yeah, it was, it was great for an 18 year old. <laughs> yeah, didn't from have Indiana, a clue about from life. Kokomo, right? I'd never been out. I, you know, I'd hardly ever really been out of Indiana except on short trips with my parents. Right. You know? right. So you did that, and what did you, when you came back, how long did you do that? I didn't come back. That was the summer. I've not ever gone back. You've never gone back to Indiana? Other to visit. Other really? than to wow. visit. So you're in you're in the Grand Canyon. The summer ends. Your job ends. What do you do from there? Well, you probably don't remember about this, but there used to be a draft. No, that's yeah. They still have 19, selective service. Yeah. Yeah, but but uh, in those days, this was in 1966. Okay. When you were 19 and 30 days and not in college, you were gone. Okay. That simple. Really. So I I got my draft notice. Um, while I was in the Grand Canyon, my mother's... Even though you were working for the federal government? That didn't matter. They didn't matter. Didn't matter. Okay. Nothing yeah. mattered. College nothing was the only thing that could mattered. save you. N yeah. Nothing mattered. They need, as they started that escalation in the 60s, 66 and 67, they were just... Grabbing everybody. They grab it, grabbed yeah. everybody. And, and uh, I didn't... Um, I didn't want to go in the army. Okay. So I tried to go in the navy, but the navy was wasn't taking anybody. All right. So, without having a clue, I joined the Marines. Oh, okay. I don't know. <laughs> really? I, no, I was not, very I'm naive because that's quite. Young, but yeah, you're right. I was very naive, and I mean, everybody said, yeah, "Gosh, what is wrong with you?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, uh, uh, but they had said that you know that they would, uh, I would be an electrician on working on aircraft yeah well after I bought that I was told that that doesn't ever happen that they don't you yeah, rarely get tell yeah, you yeah. whatever they yeah, need yeah. to tell you to get you that's to sign changed up. a little but that was that way for many years yeah uh, but the good news is it did happen for me oh really well, yes that's it good. did exactly so you got the deal. as they said it, yeah. was. it was unbelievable wow. it was unbelievable so but um, so that was when I was in um, I was still at the Grand Canyon I enlisted in Flagstaff okay and so, uh, instead of going to boot camp in Paris Island, I went to San Diego. Wow. Okay, so you're in San Diego as a marine uh, aircraft? No, just for boot camp. Oh, just for and boot then, camp, okay. And then when that was over, I went to um, uh, Jacksonville, Florida. So isn't that, a, did they do that on an island there? Or is that actually? Oh, no, that's Paris Island. Oh, that's, no. that's for the men. That's for the, I mean, that's for the East Coast. Don't they have what's the uh, the the there's a base right offshore uh, in, San, in Diego. San Diego? Is it Air Air Force maybe or, or I don't know. It's not Coronado. Or I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, I was there for a little while. Anyway, so you so you you got you did your basic training there, and where'd you go for your? I went to training? I went to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, so Jack from Jacksonville, you got your training, and what yep. was your exact training to do? To um, work on. Uh, the electrical systems of um, jet airplanes. Okay. Of any kind of airplane, really. So that you got your training, and where did they station you? Buford, South Carolina. Okay. And um, and was that a training base? Because they had, they must have had most of their. No. They have they have two bases there actually. They have the the largest boot camp. Okay. Huge. It's a huge marine presence. Yeah. And and they have an air station. Okay. Uh, where they had they had at that time they had they had three squadrons and a, and a support squadron. So they were stationed there, or were they flying in and out of there? To oh no, Vietnam? they were stationed there, and then they would go if they would go to Vietnam, they would all go. Okay, the whole squadron. Did you ever get sent with a squadron? Where did you, you never? You were always I never left Buford. Good. Wow, you got lucky, huh? I did. Yeah. I'm telling you, <laughs> there was no reason. Yeah. There was no reason. That the great story about it. I was in there about oh, I was in the Marines for over a couple of years and. I was home in, uh, at my grandpa's on a, on a New Year's Eve, and I can't remember what year it was, but it was I was probably in over two years. Okay. And grandpa asked me uh, if I thought I would go, and I said, "Well, it's only it's inevitable." I says, "I've been I've been volunteering to, so I could get it over with." 
He says, so if you actually went, it would shorten your term. term no. Oh, you just, just figured you were gonna, over with. <laughs> okay, so you knew you were going to probably I mean, have to do it. It was inevitable. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Grandpa said, um, you don't need to volunteer anymore. If they want you, they'll come get you. Right. And I didn't. So and I never, I never went. Wow. That's amazing. So, I mean... I guess it just didn't fit the particular need they needed. Well, I think point. the need. I think the only uh, the only explanation I have is is a need that they had there. So at the they, base of South, right? Yeah. They had they had uh, two two World War II uh, transports. Okay, they were DC threes. Yeah, you know those. Yeah, the two old, propellers and the, the old. You yeah, know, the similar way you see at the Air Museum. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, um, those things were were forty years old then. Right. And they really didn't, um, there wasn't much manuals. Right. So the guy that was there showed me, but with my farming background, I wasn't afraid to bail something together. And they're right. pretty, they're pretty, they're pretty. Right. Um, you didn't have to fly it. <laughs> well, kidding. I did end up as a crew chief, which was, which was pretty, we used to fly all over the place. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it was great, but, yeah. but um, they're, they're pretty forgiving. Because they're pretty simple, right? Right. And and um, you know, I get some change. I mean, the 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 cylinders you can put your head in them. Right. They're huge, yeah. eighteen cylinder engines. But okay. I didn't work on them too much. But I did some. I did most all of electrical work. But right. you could troubleshoot them while you're flying. You could pull out fuses and tell them past the pile. What does that do? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. What'd but, you lose there? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But but I think. Because I could keep them flying, they were the most important. They were very important because this was the they call it the the hams H and M S. I can't remember what it stands for, but but it's the support. It's the support squadron. Okay. They 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 don't have their own planes except for a couple. They had two um, two A four trainers and and two and a C one seventeen and a C forty seven. Okay. And before that, they had a. I want to say F9, but I don't think that's right. I can't remember. Maybe it was. It was a long jet, long skinny looking hot dog kind of a jet. So they, they had something for you that you needed. they needed you there for. I so, think, you know, I think you, that was you it. You found your I niche think, and they don't want to let you go. I right? think so. Yeah. And, and, and I found a lot of exciting things to do in Charleston. <laughs> yeah. That's so a, it was that's a nice, it was, it nice was town. A, it was a wonderful town. Yeah. And I, I knew, I met a guy who, who lived there who took me home to his home right and you know we yeah. met some girls and it was all over you were young and you had fun <laughs> yeah, yeah we were yeah. young and we had fun we went to lots of beaches and okay so you did your your tour in in uh in the marines and what what happened when you got discharged um i had sometime during that time come to connecticut with a friend okay and um I had decided long ago I wasn't going back to Indiana, but I wasn't right. no, didn't know where. Right. And so I, I had lived with a couple of times that I had been here. I really fell in love with Connecticut. Did you? But um, what was it? What was it? I, I think it was the diversity. Okay. Because we don't have that. I mean, we don't have any. I didn't know anybody that spoke another language except the Mexican migrant workers that came in and right. did the p tomatoes. So it was more interesting. Yeah. It's more interesting the the the. The terrain right. is varied and, and yeah. very different. It's uh, not, not cities as flat. are different, right? <laughs> no, and, but there's a lot of it. The Connecticut River Valley is really reminds me a lot of Indiana because it is that best, wonderful flat soil, and, right. and they can grow anything on it. And yeah, you have some, especially in that area, had still had some sweeping vistas of like oh, farmland. Sure. Oh yeah, a lot of oh, that's yeah. grown in now. Back in yeah. yeah, back then it was it was still it was much more active, but um, mm. the, the real reason I got to come was because um, just. I don't know, six or seven months before I was ready to get out, my uh, my wife, not then, but the woman that would be my wife. You were came, dating her at the time? No, well, yeah. I met her. She came down with a friend of hers to to who was coming down to see see a guy that I was living with. Okay. And um, I followed her home. And that would be Betty. That would be Betty. Okay. All right. We got married in 1971. Okay. And, uh, Still good. <laughs> the rest is history. That's good. Okay, so uh, you came here. Did you come? No, you weren't in East Granby yet. So where where was Betty from? 
She she's from Danbury. Okay, and so she was a she had graduated from Central and was teaching school at in um, Avon. Okay, and, and, li you, and living still living in New Britain. And you met her when you got discharged. You came up to yeah. to kind of mm -hmm. finish the courtship or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we got married fairly I don't know, six or seven months after I came. Uh, so where did you work? Or where did you? I was. Work? I started out working in a, as an electrician for a for an industrial washing machine factory in uh, East Berlin. No kidding. They make um, they made those the huge uh, industrial washing machines that in the in the big laundries. But also right. one of their biggest contracts was battleships. Oh was, really? Was, and I mean they were like half inch or better steel. And they were huge. The drums, you mean? yeah, yeah. Well, the 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 frame that they sat in, and okay. then the, the drums were lighter, but they were. But I would I would do the electrical work for this for the the um, the sink drives that would control the water, okay, and control the soap and. So would you like. actually wire it, or were yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you were a. Uh, uh, Literally an electrician. Yeah, I was. A, I was an electrician. <laughs> yeah, right. So I wasn't a house electrician, but I was. I well, was sometimes when you get into those fields, you're just doing the design work, or you're just doing the sketch, you know. But you were actually in. in well, I was never sophisticated to do that stuff. Okay. I, but I knew how to wire things up. So yeah. So uh, so okay. So you're working at the the uh, industrial washing machine factory, and you get married. And where do you? How, how long did you work there? Uh, a little over a year. Okay. What did you do after that? Went to college. Oh, so you went back to school? Oh yeah, I didn't go back. I mean, well, I went back. Oh, you went to school. You went to college. You hadn't gone yeah. prior. Um, you know, my my wife convinced me that I should do get a that. degree. I mean, there was well, there there was um, the GI Bill was wonderful then. Right. It was just like passing up free money if you right. didn't go. Right. And so I I really didn't have the credentials to even go to college. Right. But I. I took some courses at Central, some night courses at Central. Right. And then I, I decided that I really wanted to be back to agriculture, do something in agriculture. And I went to the Rackle Hicks uh, School of Agriculture, which is a two year program at the University of Connecticut. Okay. And so you you, in the, you endeavored to get into agriculture after all that? Oh, absolutely. Experience, electrical I definitely, experience. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, you know, the arrow, this. Aircraft business was there was no jobs then either. Really, basically. Really. <laughs> yeah, I thought sure that I would get a job. Um, so it had doing peaked. something at at an airport like Pratt Whitney. Or yeah, yeah, Pratt Whitney. Or, I mean, especially up here. I mean, right. they had all kinds of places. I Amels and Standard, and 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 the airport and the and I thought sure I would get some kind of a a, a, a you know like a crafts and become a machinist yeah. or become right something like that right but I guess I didn't wait long enough because it, Betty convinced me to think about the school and I and I got into this two year school and I did I did very well okay I found out I knew more than I. Used to. It's <laughs> probably an age where you're a little more well, acclimated so. well, to I was, learning. I was you know what I mean? 25. Yeah, that's a great time to go. So, so, um, so I was only I was only one semester at the um, Radcliffe Hicks, and I went into the full time uh, four year program. Okay, so what did you get your degree in? A animal science and and uh, managerial finance. I really fell in love with economics. <laughs> so, where are you living at this point? New Britain. Okay, so I commuted right. from okay. New Britain. All right, so you're in New Britain. You're going to school. You get your degree. Any kids yet? No. Nope. No. 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 Still no children. Okay, so you you uh, get your degree, and where do you go to work? From? I went to work for an uh, agricultural lender, Agricultur Farm Credit, which is an agricultural lender, a cooperative that lends money to farmers. Okay. And it was, and that's it was wonderful. So okay, explain that to me because if you get a degree in agriculture and you get into banking in some ways. Well, I what, what, what my degree was well, my degree was. I mean, I started out not knowing I wanted to to be in finance, mm. but I took one economics course and I was hooked. Really? And I took I took all but one course short of having my degree in in managerial finance. Really? Okay. But they wanted me to go to get a double degree. They wanted me to go a whole nother semester. Right. And the GI Bill was gone, and I was ready to go to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at this point, you were twenty nine. Yeah, twenty eight. Yeah, twenty eight. Yeah. Right. So, so um, I got offered this job. A lot had to do with my age and maturity, and and my uh, 
military background. Yeah, yeah. And my farming background was very important to them. Right. That, that somebody working with farmers had a clue of what they were doing. What exactly did you do for them? I, I was a lender. So I you, was a lender and appraiser. So you actually wrote loans for Absolutely, farmers? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What was the appraisal part of that? At that uh, well, we back in those days, the, the loan officer did everything. Really? They made the loan, they made the appraisal, they closed the loan, and they foreclosed and collected it if necessary. It was a wonderful training ground. I bet. you were. It was like, you know, not many fields have that diversity right. anymore. No, it's the, very special. The commercial yeah. banks don't yeah. have that, never did. And, and it was just... I mean, it just trained me uh, so well to do so many different things and right. and uh, build your confidence. And, and it was, I went, I moved, I started in in Rocky Hill, and then I went to, I was in South Deerfield for two years. Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I went to um, Middletown, New York, where there was a, they were having a land bust and a, a real crisis and. Right. We just foreclosed on everybody in sight, and we learned a lot. <laughs> it was really a thrill of victory and agony and defeat. It was the one. Yeah, thing. it's a brutal process, but it's you learn a lot. Yeah. So you know, I did that, and then I was then I. Um, what precipitated the crisis in New York? It was it was a land boom. It was a, it was a, it was right before uh, when New York was doing so well, and they thought everybody was going to move up into. Um, that that lower part of New York, Orange County, and, and right. uh, they were they were going to put the second span on the Newburgh Beacon Bridge, the um, air base down there. They had purchased thousands of acres of land to expand it into a commercial airport, and so people were speculating on land, and and uh, it all fell apart. So the farmers were paying more for their farms than they should have. No, they were selling them. Oh, they were selling them. Okay, they so how did, them. how did you guys get? I thought you were well because they for the because they they got lost sight of their mission and they were they were lending well, they were, to the speculators. Oh, so they got out of the farming. Yeah, yeah they they were, well, they were you know they were lending they were to the guys buying well, the farms because the farmers stayed there to rent or the guys who bought the farms. Said they were going to farm. There were still farms when they bought them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was what was interesting uh, uh, consequence of that is once we foreclosed on them all, the farmers came back. Did they? Maybe not the same ones, but, <laughs> yeah, but farmers right. came back. They filtered as, back and took they back. They filtered back and took them back and yeah. and created some viable agriculture again for a while. Interesting. Okay. Now all that's happened. Yep. And it is the developed. It just was twenty years too. Yeah, quick. it was just twenty years uh, yeah. ahead of its time. Not a, not not the first time that's happened. Right, <laughs> right. Being in real estate, you <laughs> know that right. for sure. Absolutely right. Okay, so you're looking at uh, farming finance. Uh, you're living in New Britain. You're married at this point. Yeah, yeah. We, oh yeah, we got. Yeah, married you said right you got married seven months after. Yeah, yeah. after you moved. Okay, so uh, what? Where do you go from there? You stay in New Britain for a while? Or? Oh no, we we moved okay. to South Deerfield. Oh, you actually moved there. Oh yeah. Okay, to go with the job. Okay. Oh yeah, All we right. moved there, and then we moved to Middletown. Okay. And then we were there six years or seven. I I worked in an office, and then I became the branch manager of an office in New Paltz. Okay. And I didn't move there. I commuted. It was. 40 minutes or so from Middletown. Okay. And then then I took a job uh, for the for the central bank that was in Agawam. So that's when I moved to East Granby. Okay. And then then I was in charge of appraisal for New York, New England, and New Jersey. Now you're a guy that had traveled around quite a bit, mm -hmm. been in a lot of different venues and yeah. different, different places. What was your first impression of East Granby and how did it happen? Well, you know, the first impression was, was one of the first... Um, Days that I was here after I got out of the Marines, I was just driving around trying to find places, and I went to ABB, not okay. ABB Hamilton. Okay. But what was interesting is I I came to that huge interchange at 80, 187, 189, and it still just strikes me: what is this thing doing here? You mean why the, is this the here? mini highway? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why is this here? Why is there? Was that like that then? Oh, oh yeah. they had already built that. It yeah, was yeah. done. Okay, all right. it hadn't have been, couldn't have been done very long. No, no, because that's fairly. Because it was only, yeah. it was only two lane from four lane from the light. Right. From. Yeah, it's a strange little strip. It, and it was just, and of course back then it's hard to remember, but it was all wooded. 
Okay. Colborough had not started really to develop the office park yet. Okay. So it was still all agriculture. So all of a sudden you get this little interchange. You hit this four lane thing, <laughs> and then you see this huge interchange yeah. going. You and think there's you're nothing somewhere. Here. <laughs> that was my first impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, actually, it was it was probably <laughs> yeah because we had it, it, it's it's amazing when we were when when we were um, I finally got to, to school. Right. We thought we would move from New Britain and get a little more closer, a little more convenient to school and to right. Avon. And we actually looked at that house on Spoonville. That if you go, if you go east on Spoonville, past Christmas Tree Lane and that house, that very next house on the right. Okay. That was a that was a beat up. Oh, on the old, corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beautiful now. That yeah, was a yeah, beat up old yeah. two family. And we really? actually looked at that. The one with the around. pillars and the. Yeah. No, no, not that one. The one on the right. Oh, not okay. The All right. House. Yeah, yeah. It's. It, Somebody in the last several years have bought it and re renovated it, and they put a pool in there. And oh yeah, no, doesn't that have pillars on the? I, I'm no, not thinking of the big house, not the no. Cole, Cole's house, but oh. yeah, on the I know maybe it does, but whatever. It's a know. nice house. It's, but it, yeah, yeah. And it wasn't then. It was a really beat up it's got old like two ten acres of land there too. I think. It, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so so that was a, that one caught of your eye. Other, yeah. Well, we were just following ads, and we yeah. just went to it, and and uh, but we we decided that that. There wasn't any place more convenient than where we were. We were on uh, Farmington Avenue in in a in a pretty nice little apartment in in, in, in New Britain. In New, okay, right. so we were only we were less than a mile from eighty four. So that was before you made the big jump arounds. Yeah, yeah that was yeah. while I was in school. I commuted right. from there, and it, okay, it, it worked out well. So, uh, so you you, the, you you were impressed by the big interchange <laughs> to nowhere. Well, right? I don't know if I was impressed yeah. or just uh, confused. confused. <laughs> Perplexed. Yeah. yeah. So you were. Uh, so other than that, anything else from, do you remember from uh, when? Now, now this is a few years later. You're actually looking for a place to live. Okay. So you're following at that point. You're following real estate ads again. Is that one? Yeah. That was yeah. A, that was a very another very interesting time. Um, this is late '70s, early '80s. This is this is this is uh, early '80s. This is okay. the, the 1982, and it was it was when interest rates. Mortgage rates were fourteen percent, and and, uh, and they'd the come prime down rate from was set, right. <laughs> right. The prime rate was had peaked at twenty one percent. Right, right, right. There were there was. I don't know why people don't remember these things, but they, they talk about this recession being worse than others. We looked. My wife looked at sixty houses. Right. In Simsbury, Avon, Suffield, and East Granby. Right. Sixty houses. Okay. And and then she boiled it down to maybe ten. Okay. That I looked at. Yeah. And we just fell in love with that one in on winding hills. Okay. And that so that's was, a fairly new a development. That well, no, that was ten, well, 10 yeah, 15 was, years old. It was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was. It was. Uh, well, that house was built in fifty nine. Right. So, so 20, it was already twenty years old. Twenty. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, you you moved in and, and children at this point. Yes. Okay. And Lisa they, was their Lisa, names are Lisa. The oldest was born in '79. Okay. Born in New York. All right. So she was just three. Uh, yep. So, and then it was another eight years before Laura came. Oh no, kidding. Okay. So she was born in 1987. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So you had uh, you had the two two children, but you first moved into East Granby, and what what was it like then? I mean, what was it? What was early? Well, 80s? you know, I don't know. You didn't get I, involved, uh, like, or well, not at all, yeah. Be, yeah. because I was I was traveling. I was traveling right. three and four and five days a week. Okay. So I I was not involved at all. My right. wife was, had become very involved. All right. And uh, but I I didn't have any really any involvement until um, I left that bank and started my own business. Okay. And what did you do? Um, what was the business you started? Appraisal. Well, okay. I always do. <laughs> so, okay, but that by was... the time I had, but by the time I got to the bank, the bank that, that the job that I had at the bank right was focused on appraisal. There was a point where I had to make a decision whether I wanted to go in to be administrative supervisor of people who make loans, or be an appraisal. Right. I liked the hands-on stuff so much that I thought 
You didn't want to sit in the office all day right. just telling right. people what to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. And so it turned out to be a wonderful thing for me, and it still is. I... So you started Tom Henry Appraisals? Yes, yeah. yeah. T.W. Henry Real Estate Appraisals. And, and your specialty started, Well, is... actually, it wasn't that, quite that easy. But do you I, do... I started, I, I took a, 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 a transitional step and went to work for somebody else for about six years, maybe five years. Okay. From 89 to 94. Okay. And he, so was that, five years, about five years. And I created a commercial appraisal department for him. He was just a residential guy. Right. So I created a, a commercial department, and it turned out, like I said, all the right, uh, the right choice for the wrong reasons. Right, I right. never imagined this was going to happen. The, 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 the month after I left, they, they were closing down the banks. Oh. The FDIC collapse. Oh, that was, uh, what year was that? 1989. Wow. Yeah, that was quite a, and, quite a disaster and, at that and point. And that created so much work for appraisers. It was unbelievable. So they had to establish all these crash loans. What, what do right. we got? Right, I, mean, right. I mean, we just foreclosed on everything. I mean, we, we, we appraised. <laughs> You're like it the was, undertakers. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, and, and the good news, one of the things was I did so, I, I, I got into, I mean, I was an outsider. Yeah. I was a. I was a farm banker. Yeah. I mean, nobody even knew what that was. Right, right. And but very few people had the experience with foreclosure that I had. Right. The loan collection. Right. And especially in regarding to appraisal. Right. And uh, so I grew that business from me to seven appraisers in about a year. Really? Wow. And then it so went were from seven times. appraisers to me in about a year, <laughs> because right. as soon as the the boom was over. When the, when the crash was over, when the crash was over, there wasn't right. any work because yeah. there wasn't. They weren't lending any money. Right. The, the everybody was. There was still a, a huge inventory of houses and lots on the market. Right. And and so, you know. It, so they knew what everything was worth. They just couldn't sell it. Right. So there was really no well, business. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was uh, tough times. Great times. Yeah. <laughs> we always. You know, we are very appraisers are, are really counter cyclical. Yeah, yeah, our yeah, best yeah, yeah. our best years are other people's worst. We gallows, try to keep that quiet. Callous humor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you did that and you uh, acquired uh, or you developed a pretty decent business that was mm -hmm. able to support you and your family and and do that. And your children went to school in East Granby. What was your impression of their experiences? Well, it was it was mixed. Mixed, yeah. yeah. Well, I think um, the. They provided the right kind of things that the older daughter needed. She had a learning disability, and, okay. and it prepared her to succeed. There was a time when we weren't sure she was going to go to college, okay. and, or wasn't even graduate high school, maybe. Right, right. But she's she's been very successful. She graduated college. She's been in California as a music therapist for twelve years. So it, and it worked. Worked fine. Yeah. And um, the other one is kind of on the other end of the scale. Very okay. bright and. Um, she went to uh, Northwest Catholic for high school. Okay, so you put her into a great. Yeah, How did that work out? Was worked that, out very yeah, well. It gave yeah. her the it gave her the credentials that she needed to get into the kind of high end school. She went she went to George Washington University, and then my and, niece is there right now. And then uh, and then she went went for her master's in Harvard. Okay, so so she took advantage of the opportunity, and she mm -hmm. need, sounds like she needed a different. Yeah, she structure. needed a different skill set yeah. and, and a different a different level of. Of uh, education than than you could get at East Grammy. Right. So you've been you've been in East Grammy coming on thirty years. What are the biggest changes you've seen in town? Um. Well, the first one was the was in, I guess that was about ninety four when the when they had a major regi regime change regime change right. when when the, when the that group. I guess they were mostly Republicans. Were running, were just had a iron-fisted control over the community, right. over the business of the community. And right. I mean, not that that was all bad. Huh. They did a lot of wonderful things in terms of long-term planning, zoning, and long-term planning. For that was that was very good, to well done, and their planning right. with the with the industrial zone parts and right. and their using the benefit of the were able to get the town to benefit from the from Proximity, the airport yeah. and, and those kind of things. 
So that was a big deal, and I was a, I was a, a, a big part of that. Okay. You got involved at that point? Yeah, you got, what did, yeah, what did you what, do? What did you get involved with as a town? Well, <laughs> the, or in the, town, the, the first thing that I did was I ran for office. Okay. And the best thing that happened was I didn't get elected. For, I was the only, I, I think it was for uh, the tax appeal commission. Oh, uh, so, uh, not zoning. Ta the no, tax, no, no, no. <laughs> tax appeal. Board of assessment. Board appeals. of assessment. Yeah. Appeals, I'm supposed right. to know this. Yeah, <laughs> you should know that. All right. You're selectman, right? No, no, no. Um, oh, you're not. I'm chairman of the, the DTC. So, oh, yeah. So I'm supposed to I'm supposed to line people up for those positions. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, that that uh, I did that, and and I was the only one on Kill Bond's ticket that didn't win. <laughs> Board of Assessment Appeals is usually, most of those seats are, you know, those lower level seats are going to go Republican unless there's a real compelling reason. Well, it was just, a, I don't know what it was. I, I lost it, by three votes. Yeah. So. And they had a recount. It was really fun. Really? <laughs> they had a recount? For, <laughs> who cares? High drama, right? Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was neat. And then, but then I was appointed on to, by Kel Bond to the Economic Development Commission. And okay. We did a lot of, a lot of uh, research for the development, some of the things that, that happened, you know, for the trying to connect the businesses and do things to get the right to get the uh, community more focused on what they needed to that's do. That's actually a commission that can have a lot of effect if can. it's an aggressive little so. group. Yeah, Very much yeah, so. Yeah. Very so, much so. So any other groups or commissions or boards that you serve? Um, seems like there was one other one I was thinking about but I forgot. But I was more of a of a special projects. I did yeah. do um, we did a special what it was called, but we did a special study about the town and the and the businesses and the and the connectivities. Okay, uh, we did that. I did. Um, you mean other than like the ten year plan or whatever they? Oh did. Yeah. yeah, this was a this secondary a thing. And I plan of what it was, I right? Think. Yeah. But and I was. Um, I do. I've done a lot of appraisals for the town. Okay. Not, you know. For free, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> not all of them, but yeah, some of them. I yeah. mean, it, but more, more than, more than that. So much as as being like a consultant. I mean, we would talk. They would. Yeah. Say, no, they just know. needed an, an well, educated. They, during that time, uh, they were really looking. They needed places to expand for for athletic fields. Okay. And and we looked at everything. We looked at that. Piece. Right. Two or three times next to the high school that the guy finally built the big house on. Right, right. And we looked at that stuff across from the town hall, and that was, you know, just too wet. And then we just really stumbled onto the Veets farm, and that turned out to be just a fantastic. So why don't you tell that story? That's an interesting. Cause well, you it was. Were it, it was. I was just aware of it because of because of they. That was still part of that time when the when the FDIC owned. Tremendous amounts of land, right? Uh, everything they were selling packages. It's early nineties, yeah. Yep. This, they were selling um, packages of of bad loans, right? But they had they actually had acquired this. This was part of that big ridge development there that had gone belly what, up. Yeah, this yeah, is what yeah. was left. Yep. And um, they were looking to sell it, and I heard about it, and. I told Kelbon about it, and also, I don't know if he knew about it or I knew about it, but but about the, I think that was the first year that the the EP had started their grants. The DEP. Yeah, we yeah, got okay. a DEP grant, a fifty percent grant on that. Okay. And then they got they got something else, so they really did a great. They did well to get that. Yeah, it was a grand from, slam for the town. It was. Should, it yeah, was a yeah. fantastic yeah. thing that they did, and yeah. they were very smart about it. They, the the most of that open land. They purchased with different money, right. so that they have the flexibility to do other things with it. So they weren't their hands weren't tied, right? Yeah, because the DEP grant has to be for passive recreation and open space, right? right. So the whole ridge was purchased with that, right? And, and this that part was so that, that so they can develop part. portions of it if they chose, right? To. Or yeah. they they can use it for what they're doing. They got some town offices there. They got some fields there. They got right. other activities that they. Right. The, I guess the the motivating factor was the as always the one thing that didn't happen right. is that they thought we were going to have the Tri Town Fair there. Oh, okay. They, they were at that time. It was still. It was still. It had been at Bradley forever. Okay. And then, I forget when it was when that tornado came through in eighty one or 
eighty or whenever it was, right? Wiped it out yeah. along with the the uh, National Guard. Yeah, that and, was and the and the Air, Air Museum, Museum and <laughs> all of that. And so they so they try. lost that. Yeah, and so they had been without a home. They had been going to a couple of improvised places in summers. Okay, but they wanted to get back closer to ninety one and. And they really liked the location, East Granby, which is almost, which is where it was. Anyway, Never even heard of the Tri Town Fair. Was that something that? Oh yeah, it still is a big 4-H fair. Oh, okay, so it's just for the 4-H. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's okay. a 4-H fair. It's Tri, Tri Town, I think it's called. Some, what else was it called? But anyway, they thought that they were going to have a home. We thought that we were going. Yeah. It was going to be the home for there, but it turned out it wasn't. Okay. So, uh, but it turned into so many other wonderful Oh, yeah. Things. yeah. It, 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 it <laughs> That's was, where I just, it was, it was, the, the, the 5K race there this morning. Right. Yeah, so. all, all the good things that they've done, been able to do with that and, and the ability to have that and have that space open in Is the there, middle of town. I'll ask you a hard, uh, since you've been so kind of focused on those sort of aspects of the town, is there anything you would change about the town? Is there anything you would, if you had a magic wand, Tom Henry's magic wand of development and conservation or whatever, if you could say, okay, I'm going to do this. And it doesn't have to be having to do with land or anything, but just one thing in town that you would quantify and say, this is what I would do different. I don't know what I would do different. I mean, something has to be done with the schools. Okay. They're, 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 they're too small to provide the best kids. The year that, that my daughter went to and didn't go to high school, okay. so did nine other kids. The top ten of the, the top best left town. Unfortunately, you know, they've, they've, they've done a lot in the last 10 years or so to kind of tr turn that around, but there's a real pushback now in the other direction. Well, I mean, I mean it's just so much money. Yeah. And, and it, it goes, I'm, I'm on both sides of the fence yeah, because yeah, it yeah. goes to, they were required to, to help my other daughter. Right, right. But they weren't required to help the smart one. Right. <laughs> I mean, not that the other one was not smart. No, she, she was just she different had, talents. Yeah, needed, yeah, yeah. She needed she needed to learn how to deal with what she had. Yeah, everybody's she got different skill sets. And, and, you know? and, and but they but they provided her with that with with the training that she needed to succeed, right. and she did. Yeah, and and so uh, so that would be the one thing you would. Yeah, and I don't yeah. know what I don't know what the answer is. Often I think it's consolidation. Yeah, but you know, people don't want to give up this wonderful little system we have but well yeah and I, I think they looked at it just in the recent budget they looked at regional school costs and what that ends up costing and you look at what East is what Grammy charges Heartland and it's not much different than what we're paying so we're right it's a critical well, I'm, I'm not concerned about the cost yeah, oh yeah you're just trying to quality <laughs> yeah yeah, what, yeah well what they're providing what, what what the kids are getting and that and that the best kids have to leave town to get to get what they, they need. that's unfortunate yeah so Okay, uh, uh, I'll, we we got to wrap up here so you can go watch the Preakness. But if there's anything, if you were to give advice to a, a young person growing up today, what would that be? Well, I told my children they could do anything they wanted to do, okay. do but do something that you like to do. Okay. And they did, and I'm not sure if they'll be able to feed themselves, but they like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, your business is doing good <laughs> so far. Yeah. You can help. <laughs> yeah. That's only going to be good for so many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then they're supposed to help me. Yeah, that's true. But I think I, I think that is one of the things is to is to is to to not look at at the rewards of it so much as to as to what you are really going to enjoy doing and let the rewards come. Right. Um, they may or they may not. Yeah. But I mean, you certainly have to make sure that you can feed yourself. But, right. But uh, you and I both know so many people. Who go through life just dreading getting going up to work in the morning to go yeah. to work, just yeah. dreading that they are, that they've gotten themselves uh, into in a position where they feel that they can't change because they have commitments. commitments when you're an right. adult, you're right. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you get boxed into a position. Unfortunately, I I, I don't think I did it as consciously right. as I'd like to say that I did because right. it just. Worked out, right? Like I said, the right the right choices for the wrong reasons. Yeah, but right, it right. Out. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't an elaborate plan? It just happened. But I think there, you know, to, to give you credit, I mean, there is a plan to following your muse too, which is, sounds more like what you did. You 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 dealt with what was in front of you, and you made the decisions as best you could. That's the, that's not forcing yourself to do something you don't want to do. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So even like your park ranger job, you were it fell in your lap. You could have not done it. 
Right. But you said, hey, this looks pretty good. That's kind of that kind of gets back to your advice. I mean, if you do what you want to do at the time that you're well, faced I think with it's decision. important to to make sure that you that you that you don't create regrets. If you have a choice to do something and there's no consequences not to do it, right? I mean, one of the biggest things that 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 my wife and I did, um, we took three summers off when I was in college. Right. She would take. Back then, they would pay you a lump sum at the end of the school year that you lived on for the summer. We would take that. I would pick her up, and we camped cross country three years in a row for ten weeks. Yeah, I always used to joke uh, with my wife at the uh, when we first got married that, or even before we got married, that we were either going to do it now, or we're going to do it in an RV when we're seventy. You know what I mean? And I'd much rather do it now. So, well, I'm I'm open are, to do it again. <laughs> there you go. You're getting close to the other, <laughs> but not in a tent. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, I mean, you just touched. I think one. One of the best sayings I've ever heard is you reg- you don't regret the things you try and fail you regret the things you never try. That you didn't right? That I you mean, didn't other than jumping out of a plane t- without a parachute, there's a lot, there's right. a, many and, good things and, to do in life. And yeah. you're right. I mean, there's there's choices. The choices don't make excuses if there's not a, if there's not if it's if it's an appropriate thing to do. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. That's what yeah. I think. And when, I mean, when I try to live that way, and Lo was with another appraisal saying that I have developed is, is you'll never be any closer if you something you think you want to do, or I think a lot of it is a, a picture you want to take. You got to take it now, right? Because yeah. it's not likely to be there when you come back. Things are always changing. Things are always changing. Well, thanks for coming in tonight, Tom. Well, uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I've kind of, well, I don't know if it was too exciting to hear oh, no, about you, my life. I thought we were going to talk I more just, about the I think it's fascinating things. just hearing all the stories. I mean, that's why we do this show. So, Well, Any, I mean, it's... it's uh, but we appreciate you coming so out. Well, yeah, we appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank you for joining us tonight on Reflections on East Grammy. My name is Mike Malloy. I'm your host this evening, and our guest tonight was Tom Henry of Winding Hills in East Grammy. Uh, once again, you can view this online at gctv16.org or at regular times on Cox Cable 6, Channel 16 on Friday nights at 8 p.m. and other times through, during the week. Have a nice night, and uh, thanks for joining us.